All right, so today we're going to look at percent composition and formulas, and this is from mass data and percent composition. So the first thing you got to know about percent composition is it is percentage by mass contributed by each element in the substance or in the molecular formula, the ionic formula, and it may be used to verify the purity or the identity of a particular compound. So percent composition position of an element equals the mass of the element over the mass of the compound times 100. You can find this formula, table T, right, and it looks just like this, percent composition, percent composition by mass, mass part over mass whole times 100. <clears throat> so let's look at this, percent composition of C6H12O6 or glucose, sugar. The molecular weight is 180 grams. How do we know this? Well, 6 times 12 plus 12 times 1 plus 6 times 16, add it all together, that is 180 grams. So I'm first going to look for each of the elements on their own. How much, what percent do they make up each part of this um compound. So first off, we do the percent of the of carbon. So you just take 6 times 12. There's 6 of them times 12 the mass over the whole weight of everything, 180 grams. Times that by 100 and you get roughly about 40%. Now let's look at the hydrogen or sorry, the oxygen. I skipped over the hydrogen for right now. Let's look at the oxygen. Again, there are six of them, so six times 16, which is the weight of oxygen on the periodic table, over 180 grams times 100. Gives you roughly 53.3%. All right, hydrogen, finally. 12 times one over 18, or 180 times 100% gives you about 6.7. Now, if I add all of these up, the carbons, oxygens, hydrogen percents, I should get 100%. Simple enough. Let's look to the worksheet. Calculate the percent composition of FeSO4. First thing you're gonna to wanna to figure out is that GFM, the gram formula mass. So there's one iron, so one times 56, plus one times 32, which is sulfur, plus four times 16, which is oxygen. When I add them all up, I get 152 grams. Great, I have my whole. Now let's do the parts with times by 100 to get the percents. So let's look at iron first. So I get this part over the whole times 100 gives me about 36.8% iron. Let's do sulfur next. We'll take the part 1 times 32 over 152 times 100 gives me 21%. Let's do oxygen last. So 4 times 16 over 152, 4 and 16 over 152 gives me 42.1. I add them all up, they give me 99.9%. Uh, that's okay because when I round up, I get 100. All right, let's look. Sometimes you get these questions of calculate the percent sodium and sodium phosphate, which means I don't have to do everything. I just need the sodium part. So I got to figure out what does my formula look like? So we know it's got to be sodium Na with phosphate, PHO4. Phosphate has a negative three where sodium is a positive one. So because this is a negative three, I'm going to bring the three over next to the sodium, meaning there's three sodiums to a phosphate. Okay, so I'm just going to look at those sodiums. Again, I got to get the whole, so let's get the whole, the gram formula mass. You should have three sodiums, 23, plus one phosphate, there's one phosphate, and there are four oxygens, because the four is right next to the oxygen, so four times 16. Add it all together, I get 164 grams. So I'm just doing the sodium, not the, anything else, just the sodium. I will get 3 times 23 over 164 times all that by 100. I get 42% sodium. 
I'm done. That's it. No more. Let's see. What's next? Calculate the percent water in a hydrate. This means you have to count everything in your gram formula mass. That means the barium, the chlorines, and the two waters. Okay. So to do this, you got one times 137. That's barium. It's second from the bottom. Group two, I believe. And then there are two chlorines, 2 times 35, and then I'm going to add my hydrogens. Now, because I've got that coefficient, when you have the coefficient, it means everything behind the coefficient, you multiply by that number. So, because there's two waters, there's 2 times hydrogen. 2 times 2, 4. So, 4 times 1. Again, 2 oxygens, so 2 times 16. I add all of this up, and I get 243. Now, it's asking only for the water, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, ch or sorry, this back chunk, that's all water, I'm going to do that back chunk over 243, times it by 100, I get 22%. I could break it apart and just do the hydrogens and oxygens and add it together, just like this, and I roughly get 22%. All right, so now that we got the percent composition, we can now start looking at calculating empirical formulas. What is an empirical formula? Remember way back, that is the simplified formula for a compound. So an empirical formula is of an unknown can be calculated from percent composition, what we just figured out or mass data, which will be given in a second. We must remember, though, that the ratio implied in the sum scripts of an empirical formula is an atom or mole ratio. It's not a ratio of mass. For instance, the formula of carbon dioxide represents a compound, this this right here represents a compound that consists of one atom of carbon to every two atoms of oxygen, or one mole of carbon to every two moles of oxygen. It does not represent one gram of carbon for every two grams of oxygen. That is not what it says. It's atoms or moles. If we convert the percent or the mass data to moles, we can then find the mole ratio very simply, which then gives us the empirical formula. All right, so let's do this. Convert the masses of each element into moles using molar mass, using that gram formula mass. Find the lowest whole number ratio of moles and divide each mole value by the smallest number. So this is step one. This is step two. Step three, the molecular formula is always a whole number multiple of the empirical formula. So if the molecular or molar mass given is given, compare it to the empirical mass to see if you can figure out if it's different or the same. All right, let's do an example. A sample of methylbenzoate is a compound used in the manufacture of perfumes. It's found to contain 3.758 grams of carbon and 0.316 grams of hydrogen. Sorry, I don't know what happened. And then, okay, back to it. So you got 3.758 grams of carbon. 0.316 grams of hydrogen and 1.251 grams of oxygen. What is the empirical formula of this substance? Then, if I have a molecular weight that is 136, what is the molecular formula? So remember back to what I said. So first things first, we got to go from grams to moles. All right, let's do it. Grams to moles with carbon. And so here's my carbon, here's my hydrogen, here's my oxygen. I list the grams down, and I'm just going to convert to moles, just like we did when we did uh, MVP to the moles. We're going gram formula mass. So carbon, for every one mole of carbon, there are 12.01 grams of carbon, or 12 grams. So I 
I multiply this together. So it's actually 3.758 divided by 12. Gives you roughly 3.13 moles of carbon. Cool. Awesome. So hydrogen. This is like one of my favorite things to do. Hydrogens. Because it's one mole per one gram. I know it's a little bit different here. But it really is one mole per one gram. So basically... Whatever you get here is just going to be the moles. Awesome. Really super simple. All right. Let's look at this down here. Oxygen. 1.251 grams of oxygen. You're going to times that one mole for every 16 grams of oxygen. You'll get 0 0.07819. All right. Cool. We got all the moles. So what was the second step? The second step was to divide by the smallest number of moles on this side. All right, so we had 0 0.3129, 0 0.313, 0 0.07819. Well, the smallest is going to be this bottom one. So I divide by that number on all of them. When I do this, I get roughly a 4, roughly a 4, and a 1. Cool. So I know that there are four carbons, four hydrogens, and one oxygen. My empirical formula is then going to be C4H4O. Cool. We got, we figured out the empirical formula. Now we got to figure out is the empirical formula the same as the molecular formula by you uh, figuring out the gram formula mass and comparing it to the molecular weight given. All right, cool. Let's figure out the molecular mass of C4H4O. We got four times 12, four times one, 16. Add them all together, I get 68 grams. That is not the same as 136, but it is actually two times the amount. This The molecular weight is two times the normal empirical formula. So what do I got to do? If it's two times, I got to times everything by two. So my molecular formula is going to be C8H8O2. Cool. All right, I'm going to stop right here and we're going to do examples in the next section.